Good evening, you're watching SG News. I'm Hugh Riches. In the headlines tonight, a Hull woman in prison in Egypt over alleged drugs crimes, teaching school children about anorexia and bulimia in East Yorkshire, and an exhibition in Hull highlighting the effects of war on women. And later in tonight's programme, I'll be talking to Tracy Cooper about taking on the Wooler, the Wooler Beast, and before that, the Reverend Mary Vickers on volunteer chaplains for the police. A Hull woman could face the death penalty in Egypt after being accused of drug trafficking. 33-year-old Laura Plummer was arrested after flying into the country with tramadol and naproxen in her suitcase for her Egyptian partner. He suffers back pain following an accident. The drugs are illegal in Egypt. Miss Plummer has been held in a cell with 25 other women for nearly a month. She could face up to 25 years in jail or the death penalty. The Foreign Office is supporting her and her family during her detention in Egypt. The MP for Hull, uh, for Hull North, Diana Johnson, will lead a House of Commons debate tonight on transport infrastructure investment in the North. She called for the debate after Chris Grayling, Secretary of State for Transport, recently cancelled rail investment projects in the North, yet granted government backing to the £30 billion Crossrail 2 project in London. Recent figures show that transport investment per head in London is 10 times greater than it is for Yorkshire and the Humber. There's set to be a widespread rail disruption across our region this weekend. The RMT union has called a 24-hour strike on Wednesday as part of the long-running dispute over driver-only operated trains. There'll be a reduced service and Northern Rail is expecting to run around 65% of its normal weekday timetable. Trains, uh, trains will operate from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sharon Keith, the regional director at Northern, said the company is prepared to safeguard jobs for the next eight years if an agreement can be reached with the union on how better customer service can be delivered in the future. However, the RMT's general secretary, Mick Cash, said every single effort the RMT has made to reach negotiated settlements in these separate disputes with the different train operating companies over safe operation and safe staffing has been kicked in our faces. A Hull charity is working with secondary schools across the city to teach children about anorexia and bulimia. The eating disorder charity SEED, Support and Empathy for People with Eating Disorders, is producing a pack designed to help teachers plan lessons on the subject. The project is set to get underway in January. Marge Oten, founder of the charity, says its vital youngsters know the warning signs of eating disorders and what help is available. There's a realisation that eating disorders are going to go away and unless people understand about eating disorders and really know where to go and get help and what is important around that network of support around an individual, um, it can be a very difficult, isolated and lonely journey. It's not just about the sufferers who come to see, it's about the carers, the loved ones. We've also just launched um, a support group for youth and in that group, we, we encourage the parents to come along with the youth and with their child or their daughter or, or whatever. And, um, and I think that's where it's working, where it's never worked before, because it dispel the isolation for people to know there is help out there, to understand the illness better, for the carers to understand the illness better, is really the way forward. And all we want to do is help people to understand what they need to do, where they need to go, and how they need to go forward to live a healthier and happier life. And if you want to find out more about that charity, you can ring its helpline 01482 718130 or find them online at www.seedeatingdisorders. That's all one word, S-W-E-D, seedeatingdisorders.org.uk. The next local elections will be held in May in North East Lincolnshire. Councillor Philip Jackson, Conservative Opposition Group Leader at North East Lincolnshire Council, is confident the Conservatives can win back control. Here's what he told me on Hot Topic. Well, I think we've got a good chance of winning uh, next year. It all depends on the political environment at the time, of course, and politics is moving so quickly at the moment that uh, anything could have happened by next May. Well, but, but, but the... Low, but the Current, the current local authority, Labour-controlled local authority, is, is quite unpopular and is uh, uh, not going about um, making decisions in, in, in the most uh, popular way that, and, and keeping people on board in the locality. And I think uh, with the right campaign, the Conservatives have got a good chance of winning seats and taking control of the council. 
And you can see that edition of Hot Topic in full at 8.30 this evening here on Estuary TV. The Cottingham Centre reopened to the public today. It follows a £500,000 project to provide a number of council services under one roof as part of East Riding Council's drive to be more cost effective. The centre will offer an integrated library and customer service centre as well as registration services. And changes to how household waste and recycling are collected across North East Lincolnshire come into force today. Waste and recycling will be collected on alternate weeks, which means general waste will be collected one week and recycling a week later. It's part of the council's attempt to save money and follows similar schemes elsewhere in the country. More than 75% of local authorities collect waste on alternate weeks. A new exhibition highlighting the effects of war and conflict on women and girls around the world is now on display in Hull. The installation, called Torn, is the work of photographer Lee Karen Stowe and is on show at the Humber Street Gallery. It features photographs of wild poppies that have been picked, dried and torn apart by the artist. She says it's the culmination of a 10-year project. Torn is the culmination of um, 10 years of meeting women who have been affected by war and conflict, also researching the stories of women of war and conflict from the First World War to the present day. This isn't just art, this is real life and it's happening this week in uh, Rohingya in Burma, it's happening in, in the Congo, it's happening in Somalia, in Yemen, um, it's happening in many, many, many places and that um, just as I think Hull has had this huge impact in putting modern slavery on the table, not only for discussion but to help action to be taken, I really do hope that in this, in this tiny, tiny way that it helps towards the bigger conversation of how women and girls are being affected by war and conflict throughout the world. Now I'm joined now by the Reverend Mary Vickers to tell me about the Humberside Police Force's requirement for chaplains. Mary, welcome. Thanks very much. Thank you. So the Humberside Police Force wants chaplains. This, presumably this is for some sort of line-up, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be fun. Um, <laughs> no, it's part of the uh, their stress on, on well-being and, and also diversity. I'm half-time the lead chaplain for Humberside Police, but it's a large police force. Uh, I can't be everywhere. And my aim would be to have a volunteer chaplain at least for every main station. Um, with some with specific faith skills or other skills that would float around like I do. And it's, uh, a, it's a voluntary position, there wouldn't be any pay for this? No, no, you get expenses. Um, it's a voluntary position, it's open to uh, people who are leaders of not just ordained or whatever that means for each different faith, not just ordained leaders but lay leaders, um, accredited leaders within any particular faith group. Um, you get expenses and we, all we ask is um, around two hours a week. Uh, but more if people can, but more, can manage more it. if people could do it. Obviously it's, it's flexible. Sometimes you might do four hours one week and not none the next week. So we, we don't clock watch, um, but that's the, the general thing. And it's, it's about being around for police officers and police staff. Uh, the policing is a fairly specialist activity. Yep. Presumably it has fairly specialist requirements. There are going to be sort of various worries that only police officers might have. Is there any preparation that these chaplains would yeah, there's, have? there's um, a, a training course which is um, six sessions long and, and I'm happy to offer that to people. That's done locally, um, either North Bank or South Bank, depending on where there are most people. Um, and I'm happy for the people to treat that as discernment as well as training. Uh, so I don't mind if people come to the course and then say at the end of it, actually, this isn't for me. Um, and then there's a selection interview uh, with the volunteer coordinator for the force um, and also a, a senior police officer. Um, and, and the successful candidates do have to be vetted according to normal police vetting rules. So, you know, that might discount a few people, but they would know who they are. So if, they, if <laughs> they'd had a, 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 their uh, hands in the uh, collection plate, then they yeah, would Yeah, that's not a good idea. Okay. <laughs> if people want to get involved and they, they have the right sort of qualifications, how can they get in touch? Well, um, they can get in touch with me directly if they use Twitter um, via my Twitter handle, which is quite easy. That's N-E links chaplain. Uh, only any links because that's where I live. Um, so that's uh, on Twitter at any links chaplain. Um, but on the estuary uh, Facebook page, we're going to put my police email address and police phone number so people can get in touch. Okay. Now, the uh, fact is that police officers have incredibly dangerous 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, one hopes that they have tranquil, cheerful days where people come <laughs> and ask them, what's the time? Uh, most of their working yeah. times. But they, they do tend to be the people who run towards the danger when everybody else is running away. Yeah. So how, how can chaplaincy help? Um, often we are just a place where people can be, where they can listen, where they can... We, you know, we, ha we often say that we're a shoulder to, to lean on or a shoulder to cry on, an ear to shout at. Um, and it, it's as confidential as it can be. Um, I'm, yes, I'm paid by the police, but I'm not part of the structures. So I don't report what they say to me. Um, and so it's there. And it, it's, it's for people of all faiths and none. I often talk faith a lot less than I talk non-faith, uh, but I'm always controlled by what people want to talk about. And it's not just for people with a problem. Somebody said to me, oh my goodness, if I need to come and see you, I'll be really stuck. And I said, no, it's not just for problems. And I've kind of coined a phrase that chaplaincy is not just for Christmas when there's carol services, nor crises, but for every day. Well, that's, I think that sounds like a, fa a fairly good uh, place to stop, but uh, it's a very good point that you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a religious connection. There, no, no. Mary, as ever, thank you so much for coming on. Good thank luck. You. I hope you recruit lots of... Thank you. I hope you feel the collars of lots of dog collars. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, join us after the break. Jack will bring us a roundup of all the latest sports news, and I'll be talking to Tracy Cooper about taking on the Wooler Beast. Welcome back. You're watching SG News. Still to come tonight, Jack brings us a roundup of all the latest sports news, and I'll be talking to Tracy Cooper about the Wooler Beast. A company in Immingham has been heavily fined after risking the lives of four workers. SAR Metals Limited let a substandard property on Chestnut Avenue in Immingham to four men. Officials found that smoke detectors were missing or not working, doors didn't have the correct locks and contact details for the owners weren't displayed. The four men had their rent directly deducted from their salary but none had a tenancy agreement. The company was fined £750 and ordered to pay over £800 in costs. Bridlington is set to host a new musical event, All Shades of Soul, the Big Soul and Motown Night. We'll see the ballroom at Bridlington Spa feature classic hits from the 60s to the 80s from labels including Tamla Motown and Atlantic Records. There'll also be a Northern Soul room playing classics on original 45 vinyl, featuring Wigan Casino original resident DJ Pat Brady. That's all happening on the 25th of November, sponsored by Bridlington Tourism Association. The popular Continental Market returns to Scunthorpe this weekend. The festive market will have a variety of stalls selling items from across the world. Highlights include an Italian cheese wheel and Caribbean food. It'll be spread along the, the market, that is, not the cheese, will be spread along the high street between Gilead Street and Well Street. It runs from Wednesday until the 12th of November. A North Lincolnshire woman is set to experience the running challenge of a lifetime when she takes part in the Beast Trail later this month. I'm joined now by Tracy Cooper to tell me a little bit more about the challenges ahead. Tracy, welcome. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, what is, first of all, the Beast? Is it the Beast Trial or the Beast Trail? The Beast Trail Marathon. The Beast yeah. Trail Marathon. It's 28 and a half miles of, of just sheer torture, I think. Um, uphill, <laughs> down Dale, um, up in Northumberland. Um, we start from the village of Wooler. Um, and basically, it is 28 and a half miles around the top end of the Pennines, the Cheviot Hills, um, and reaching up to the summit of the Cheviot itself, which is over two and a half thousand feet. Um, but in total, we've got about six and a half thousand feet of ascent, which is all the smaller hills leading up to the Cheviot. Um, so I think we're going to be aching a bit I think after you we've are. done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you call it a, a, a super marathon there, 28 and a half miles, yes. which is two and a half miles more than a traditional marathon. Yes. Where did the extra two and a half miles, whose bright <laughs> idea was that? I don't know, but I'm sure we'll be cursing them by the time we get to, get to that mileage. Um, anything over 26 and a half miles is classed as an ultra marathon. Ultra marathon, yes. okay. And he talks, you have picked the most diagonal part of the country pretty much. I mean, apart from going up and down somewhere in the nor northern highlands of Scotland, you couldn't really get much more hilly and slopey again just torture absolute torture but but us runners like torture we like challenges um 
and the, the crazy the better really <laughs> you know that, that's what drew me to it I thought well it's a challenge it's it's something I've never done before um, I have run a couple of marathons before and I've done numerous half marathons but nothing like this this, so, this is proper fell running. Now you mentioned it. In, in, people do the ma London Marathon. Mm. It's a matter of sort of low single figures, number of hours. It's, it's what you'd expect for a fairly fit person to be yes. going around in what four or five hours or something. Like yeah. That. yeah. You're talking about nine hours to do this. Yeah, we've got nine and a half hours. Um, we start at eight o'clock in the morning. We've got until half past five in the evening, and there's also checkpoints every so every so often. Um, we have to reach the various checkpoints within given times, and if we don't, then we're not allowed to run any further. So you can't just enjoy a lovely no. stroll, a nice day's walk no, out? No, I was thinking I could sort of stroll along or, or run along, taking photographs along the way, because there'll be beautiful views from up there, I should imagine. Um, but no, we're, we're just going to have to get head down and just get going to make sure we get back in time. So you've got this nine hour window, mm. but within that, presumably you're going to be quite competitive as well. You, I mean, there's no point in being in it unless you're going to win it. Well, that's it, we don't want to be last. <laughs> We're not going to be first. Um, the course record is, someone did it in just over four hours last year, um, but we've no chance of, of doing anything like that. Um, I'm aiming to do it in about seven hours. I think that's reasonable for my level of fitness. When does this event take place? It's, it was actually two weeks as of yesterday, it's the 19th of November. So again, you choose a ridiculously long distance, you yes. choose a very vertical course, <laughs> and you choose the most horrible part of the year in which to do oh, it. Oh yes, yes, there, there is actually a video on YouTube of someone who did it last year. Um, he, oh, there was snow, there was fog, there was ice, so we, we are prepared for for anything. There's 300 of us doing it in so total. Presumably there's plenty of health and safety measures and there are yes, large there are. St Bernard dogs with barrels of brandy. That would be so collars. nice I would be stopping at everyone believe me. Um, there are marshals um, dotted about along the course. Um, there'll be little flags in the ground as well to make sure we, we know where we're going. Um, and when we get to each checkpoint we have to give our number in to make sure so people, you know, they can tell that we're still still with them, basically. Yeah, well, that's not, not, not always going to be easy to tell. You're not doing this just for fun. You're doing it doing it for a good cause. I am. I'm doing it for um, Lindsay Lodge Hospice, which is on the outskirts of, of Scunthorpe. Um, my husband's close friend, John Ball, um, he spent the last week of his life there. He passed away in September. Um, and the very last time we saw him, which was actually the evening before he passed away, we were so lucky to have seen him. Um, I told him of my plan to, to do something like this and I asked him who he would like me to raise the money for. Um, and himself and his partner Shelley, they both jumped at the chance, they picked Lindsay Lodge straight away because it's such a wonderful place. Um, and they, the running costs are two and a half million a year and they have to raise 1.8 million of it. So it's down to people like myself and all the volunteers, the people who run the, the, um, the shops that they have. We, we have to raise, you know, we have to raise the money in order to keep it going. If people would like to sponsor you or just not, you know, give money to the hospice unconditional on your <laughs> success in this absurd race, uh, how can they get in touch? How can they, how can they help? Well, I have a Just Giving page, um, which is www.justgiving slash Tracy hyphen Cooper 14. I think I've got that right. Okay, that's very complicated. <laughs> it is. Um, but Lindsay Lodge obviously have a website as well, um, which I, I believe I'm, I'm probably on there. Um, but I'm on their Facebook page as well. Um, and if you go on their Facebook page, you can see the Just Giving page on there. So it, it's all on there. Are, you're, are, are you an, an athlete anyway, a natural athlete? How do you prepare for this? I wouldn't call myself an athlete. I've been running for about seven years. Um, and it was a um, cancer research race for life that, that started me, honestly, and I've just kept running ever since. Um, but I do run, um, I run twice a week with the Thorn Twilight Trotters, which is my local, my local club. Um, and but we also, we went out yesterday and did 14 and a half miles. Tracy, you're mad as a hatter. I know. Thank, <laughs> thank, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Talking of sport, here's Jack from our temporary sports studio. Looks a bit like a tent. Here's Jack with all the sports. Hull City suffered a heavy defeat at the hands of Sheffield United on Saturday. The Tigers had led at half-time, but a poor second-half performance saw Leonard Slutsky's side thrashed 4-1.
Camille Grosicki's 25-yard strike had looked to set City on their way, but four second-half goals from blade striker Leon Clark condemned Hull to their third straight league defeat. Scunthorpe United will get another chance to reach the second round of the FA Cup. The Iron drew 0-0 with Northampton Town as the two sides cancelled each other out at Sixfield Stadium. The Cobblers dominated the first half, striking the woodwork twice through Aaron Pierre and Lewis McGugan. Scunthorpe improved after the break, but neither side could muster a goal as the game ended goalless. The replay has already been confirmed. It will take place next Tuesday the 14th of November at Glanford Park. Kick-off is at 7.45pm. Grimsby Town's FA Cup campaign is over for another season. The Mariners lost 1-0 away to League One side Plymouth Argyle at Home Park. The decisive goal came early on for a powerful Graham Carey strike after only nine minutes. Townkeeper James McEwen had to be on his toes to keep out another fine carry effort before denying Jake Jervis. Sekiri Dembele came close for Grimsby on the hour mark, but there was no comeback for Russell Slade, Slade's men as they exit the competition at the first round stage. Hull Ionians beat Cambridge 27-21 in the Rugby Union on Saturday. Tries from Lewis Wilson, Ricky Stout, Stephen Slingsby all set the home side on their way and a further penalty try added to their lead while two conversions and a drop goal from Chris Bell sealed the win for Ionians. Unfortunately, a technical failure prevented our live coverage of the game being broadcast on our channel. We apologise for this, but it will be repeated this evening at 9pm on Estuary TV. And that's all for the sport. Thanks, Jack. That's almost it for tonight, because over the weekend, thousands of people enjoyed various firework displays and which took place across our region. And we thought we'd show you a montage from the displays at Grimsby Rugby Club, Hull Ionians and Winterton Showground. And as you're watching that, if you have a news story, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages, email news at estuary.tv or phone Grimsby 01472311553 or write to us at Estuary TV, Nuns Corner, Laceby Road, Grimsby, North East Lincolnshire, DN34 5BQ. Hope you had a safe guy, Forks Night. Until tomorrow, for more of us.